in February of 2021. That was almost three years ago. At this point, I made a video asking the question is rise of kingdoms dying. And I made another video later that year in August of 2021, talking about the current state of rise of kingdoms. And my outlook in that video was pretty negative as well. Then in March of 2022, I asked the question once again, is rise of kingdoms dying. And in July of 2022, we got to learn how much money rise of kingdoms was made and I also asked the same question and then finally in November of 2022 I made a video talking about the current state of rise of kingdoms and why I was concerned at that time and so the other day when I saw Chisco make a video asking the question is rise of kingdoms dying I got some flashbacks okay because I am no stranger to this topic and it's been over a year since I made a video talking about the current state of rise of kingdoms and there's two reasons why I stopped making videos like that the first of which is because I was wrong so many times in a row that it just got embarrassing and two I found that videos like this typically get a mixed response I think some people who resonate with you know the frustrations of the game being in a rough spot will enjoy the video but a lot of people who maybe are enjoying the game at this moment in time might feel like this video kind of spreads a negative sentiment in the community and I totally understand that but for full transparency the current state of rise of kingdoms is something that I have talked to Chiskel about in private the topic has come up multiple times over the last couple of weeks and months and I've thought about making a video very similar to his and when I saw that his came out I reached out to him and said hey look I want to throw in my two cents as well I've watched his entire video and so I want to give you guys my thoughts on the current state of rise of kingdoms because it is in a really rough spot right now it has not been this bad in over two years at least based on some of the data and I also want to build off of what Chiskel already started discussing in his video so if you missed his video I'm going to link it down below definitely give it a view because he and I are pretty much on the same page here now this video might get a little ranty so if it's long I apologize go ahead grab a drink what's going on guys cheers but two of the main points that Chiskel brings up in his video is that if rise of kingdoms can get the collection aspect right and if it can get the community aspect right then in theory the gameplay is already good enough and arguably superior to other games in the app store in the same genre that are technically right now in theory doing uh, better than rise of kingdoms at least based on the app store ranking and i 100 agree with those statements i think the collection aspect is important and when we talk about that we mean collecting commanders collecting equipment collecting armaments there's a lot to collect in rise of kingdoms and some of it is easier to collect than others and we're going to talk about that later in the video and especially we're going to talk about this new equipment update okay that's very important we will be discussing that in this video so if you guys are wondering what my brutally honest thoughts are of the new equipment system stay tuned for that but one thing that I want to point out here is Chiskel did bring up the App Store ranking for Rise of Kingdoms. This is the Apple App Store. And this ranking is a little bit misleading, okay? Because this will change depending on whether you're looking at the strategy category, the role playing category. And also, it will change depending on if you look at this chart on an iPad versus a desktop versus an iPhone. A game could be ranked higher on iPhone than it is on iPad. And I think in his video, he was looking at this on an iPad. So he was looking at the iPad charts. It's not self evident that that's the case and so a lot of times this ranking can get confusing depending on when you're looking at it but right now we're sitting at number 49 in role playing and I'm going to be honest I don't really put that much value in the ranking on the app store the reason for that is because we have games like Age of Apes that are right now at number 17 and if we take a look at the Google Trends data Age of Apes is in green here and it's basically non-existent so I really like this the the current ranking in the app store is kind of a snapshot in time and just to be clear I've played Age of Apes I played it when it first launched I was actually sponsored to play it it was one of my first actually sponsors on the channel and the game is actually fine it actually has open field movement it's a little bit more cartoony than Rise of Kingdoms it's set in like a dystopian future where monkeys have machine guns it's fine right it's a fine game I'm not trying to bash Age of Apes right but like objectively when it comes to YouTube and Google search it is definitely not as popular as rise of kingdoms so the fact that it is ranked higher than rise of kingdoms to me means that like this isn't necessarily a good judgment of how 
good a game is performing similarly call of dragons is sitting at 93 um that does feel accurate i feel like call of dragons has really struggled since it first dropped in april but this is not a video about call of dragons if you want to know why i quit call of dragons i made a video recently go ahead and check that out a lot of you have seen it already but chiskel is right about two things in his video first of all rise of kingdoms typically does rank a little bit higher and you know in the past it has ranked significantly higher than number 49 or i think in his video it was at like 80 in strategy or something like that and the other thing that he mentioned is that there are other games like i think ebony is the one that he used as an example that are in the city builder genre that have much more simple gameplay than rise of kingdoms and by that we mean rise of kingdoms has open field fighting where you can move your troops around in real time and a lot of other city builder games and we've covered plenty of them on this channel here if you've been following for a while they don't have open field combat you send your army to a destination a battle happens basically in the background then you view the report and to me and to lots of players who play rise of kingdoms that's a massive downgrade if, when it comes to gameplay perspective and this is true that you know the gameplay of rise of kingdoms i think and most people would agree is much better than other city builder games but one point that i want to make here that's and i want to make this very clear a very simple gameplay like you know games like infinity kingdom for example where there is no real open field fighting the reason that those games still do well is because they are dead simple they are extremely casual friendly you literally do not have to think about almost anything you just send your troops out you win or lose and they come back right it's very simple it doesn't have as much action and excitement as rise of kingdoms that depends on the player some people prefer open field fighting some people don't it's up to you but one thing is absolutely certain and it's that if you remove the open field fighting from rise of kingdoms you have a much simpler game and there is value in a game that is deadly simple okay it's very appealing to a casual audience and rise of kingdoms i would argue right now has strayed a bit far from the casual crowd and we're going to talk about that later in the video now the next thing that i want to cover here is the google trends data okay now in chiskel's video he had this set to united states I have it set to worldwide i prefer to look at the worldwide chart because i do think that there is a significant international audience for rise of kingdoms especially so i would prefer to look at that but i do think i have the same dates that he put there it's important to know that all of these like he mentioned in his video are the video game category google does a really good job at tracking data based on what exactly you're looking for some people might just search the words rise of kingdoms not knowing that it is a video game and they're not looking for the video game right so yeah that's why it's important that these are all set to video game and not set to search term because this is the most accurate data that you can get for what we're talking about which is the popularity and interest of rise of kingdoms okay and you can see here that we are sitting at a 44 for for right now this is worldwide and this is web search and that's really not great uh when was the last time we were at 44 last time we were at 44 was december of 2021 and that's really bad that means the game is as popular right now as it was two years ago okay so over the course of two years we are back where we started back in december of 2021 that's not great i will point you to however the massive spike that happened after that okay so is it possible for rise of kingdom to make a, a a higher high so to speak absolutely and we've done that before there i mean there's been multiple times here where rise of kingdoms has really good months and then really bad months right i mean december of 2020 the entire world was shut down and rise of kingdoms was actually quite popular in 2020 and in 2021 and right now we are like in february of 2021 we are technically more searched now than we were back then which is kind of crazy to think so two things I that i want to point out here first of all this massive spike happens to be at the same time as a uh, community note here which which says that there was an improvement to their data collection system so you know the data after that gray line is uh, in theory more accurate than the data before the gray line and that could be the reason why there was a massive spike here in Chiskel's video he mentions the introduction of naval battles to rise of kingdoms which I do think you know I made a lot of videos about that back in the day I do think people were pretty hyped about that because they thought that we were going to get like actual ships out in the open field which would have been cool we didn't get that however I I do think that there's some of the popularity here I think has to do with the fact that like we were in another full I mean this is the winter time right here of this is basically the second part of the pandemic back then and uh there was tremendous growth 
in the mobile gaming scene around this time so i think it was kind of a perfect storm i don't think that like naval battles alone were solely responsible for this being the most popular it's ever been just doesn't make sense to me i do think that there was also massive marketing budgets in you know december obviously that's when a lot of marketing happens so that could push this up as well it is what it is uh, the next peak here was in february of 2023 Chisco mentioned in his video that this coincided with the release of armaments which is technically true but i actually want to point out a, a little bit of a, an interesting anecdote here i think that this being one of the peaks of rise of kingdoms ironically has almost nothing to do with rise of kingdoms in fact if you go to knowyourmeme.com there is a meme that was spreading around TikTok and on other places on the internet 11 months ago which would have been in mid january of 2023 which would have been right about uh right around here okay moving forward from there there was the meme i've got over x million power in rise of kingdoms now this meme spread like wildfire okay to prove my point this dude right here roman afk this video talking about rise of kingdoms has 9.4 million views on TikTok, and it has 1.6 million likes with over 13,000 comments okay another example this rise of kingdoms video has 2.9 million views and it is also the same meme i have over 5 million power in rise of kingdoms okay we have over 330,000 likes here with 1500 comments 39 thousand saves this meme was massive earlier in this year and a lot of people in the rise of kingdom niche might not even know about this meme because well let's face it all of us are in our late 20s early 30s and older a lot of us aren't using TikTok. a lot of us might have completely missed this meme okay um but i think there's no doubt in my mind that the rise in popularity of rise of kingdoms earlier this year was directly related to this literally being a meme all over TikTok. okay i only showed you two examples with massive view counts but there was there's plenty more okay you can find them so ironically uh this spike right here i actually don't really think it has anything to do with interest in the actual game people were just kind of making fun of it which is which is kind of sad now of course you know april and stuff there was there was some hype there but as you can see right now we are at a very low point and a lot of people will say that the reason that rise of kingdoms is doing so badly right now in terms of actual global interest is because of the new equipment system and also you know a lot of people feel like they're releasing commanders too quickly they're adding too many changes to the game too many systems to the game a lot of people are very frustrated with rise of kingdoms and do i think that releasing commanders too fast is killing rise of kingdoms i actually don't do I think that the new equipment system is killing Rise of Kingdoms? I actually don't. And we're going to talk more about what I, how I really feel about the equip equipment system later in the video. But the truth is that most likely the reason that we are in such a low period is it's obviously multi-factored. First of all, it could just be macro trends like the mobile gaming market in general, the amount that Lilith is spending on their advertising. They may be splitting their ad budget between Rise of Kingdoms and Call of Dragons. That's totally possible. And if that's the case, then of course, Rise of Kingdoms is going to get less new players because less people People are going to be seeing ads for it right so that is a theory as well but more than likely i think we could look at the death by a thousand cuts theory it's not just the equipment system that kills rise of kingdoms it's the fact that we have the new equipment system we have the armament system they've already announced they're, that they're going to be adding new formations later down the line we also have the crystal tech system we also have the museum and relic system on top of that we obviously have the commander system we have the building system we have the research system there's a million in systems in rise of kingdoms and if i'm a new player and i download the game and i play it for a few days and i think wow this game is really cool i'm gonna go look up guides okay and every guide that i make that chiskel makes that anybody else makes on youtube if every guide says don't invest in commanders for seven months because season of conquest is where all the best stuff is and then you say okay well what season of conquest you look up guides for season of conquest and you're like oh my god there's almost a hundred commanders in the game and there's a crystal tech system and an armament system and a, an equipment system with an iconic upgrade system and the, the game is inaccessible to new players and it's not the fault of any one system it's the fact that we now have a dozen systems in the game and it's not only complicated for new players to even understand it but they're five years behind so as a new player it's like you're looking at a mountain with a hundred thousand steps in front of you and it's like well do i even want to start that right like how have you ever watched one piece okay if you start one piece today you've got like a thousand episodes to watch or more it's ridiculous it's the same thing let's 
say you've never seen the simpsons and you want to start from season one well great news you got like what 30 seasons now or something it's unbelievable it's so daunting to catch up with that much content that a lot of people just don't do it okay and we're going to talk about that later in this video but to be clear there's no one system that puts the nail in the coffin or in this case is the reason that rise of kingdoms is in its current spot with that being said let's actually talk about the new iconic tier system because i think a lot of people are frustrated about this system and rightfully so okay this is yet another system in the game that will increase the gap in power between players that spend money and players that do not spend money but i actually think that this system and this is going to be an unpopular opinion this system is better than other systems we've gotten in the past objectively like if you do the math this is there is less power to be gained here than in previous systems that to be fair also got backlash okay but let's just take a look at everything here okay we know that a free-to-play player assuming that they can craft legendary gear which i think they can we've looked at multiple free-to-play players on the channel they, they can get their hands on you know a handful of legendary pieces for a handful of armies okay i'm not saying they can rock five armies with all gold and stuff of course not but they can get some legendary equipment i don't think anybody would would argue with that okay and also you can get iconic crystals for free you can get them from achievements you can get them from kbks and yes you're only going to get a couple but you can get them for free and so we know that free to play players can get tier one iconic if we you know extrapolate that out by a year from now it's likely that free to play players if they are focusing their efforts on the right blueprints and everything like that they will probably be able to get to tier two really aggressive players might be able to get farther but let's just be conservative and say okay the best a free to play player is ever going to do is tier two iconic let's just assume that that's the case well if you look here like this is where you get some amount of stats and ignoring some of the other stats from the enemies so what that means is the difference you know six to 12 months from now between a free-to-play players or a low spenders progress or whatever and a whales progress is the difference between tier two and tier five okay so that means the whales will get everything in tier three to five that the free-to-play players or low spenders won't have access to in general okay and what does that mean that they get more of well they get obviously you know troop capacity from tier three is pretty consistent amongst everything amongst all the different um you know troop types and everything like that they're also going to get some field damage which is probably the most damning part about all this to be honest with you guys especially for cavalry because they don't actually have the rally garrison damage on the chest piece which is kind of annoying for infantry and archers but i digress and then they're going to get some interesting bonus stuff over here now i'm also going to say something else that maybe is controversial but a lot of these bonuses on the tier five not that good i'm going to be real with you guys not that good okay look at furious strike here this is on the weapon and this is arguably the best one let's say we look at the shield of the eternal empire this is a 10 percent chance for five percent damage for two seconds with a five second cooldown the ring of doom has a 10% chance for 50% damage for two seconds with a five second cooldown. So this is literally a 10th as effective as the ring of doom. Okay. Now, if you, and this is napkin math, this is rough estimates, but if you take a Nevsky Joan with golden gear, 230,000 troop capacity, and you slap a vanilla ring of doom on it, that's roughly five and a half, maybe 6% all damage. Again, oversimplification, average it out over, you know, 50 different battles. It's roughly five and a half percent all damage. Okay. And this is a 10% chance for a 10th of that damage. So you could, you could actually say that this is about half a percent all damage. And let's just be generous and say it's 1% all damage. It's literally worse than tier four, literally worse. Okay. Now this is only for field. Whereas this is for rallying garrison. And then we have things like counter attack damage, which is literally only one half of your normal attack. So like a lot of these buffs here, guys, they're not, they're not crazy. The tier five buffs aren't insane. Okay. And the fact that it's going to cost a ridiculous amount of materials to get here, I would argue the biggest difference is between tier three and tier four heavy spenders are going to have about five and a half to six percent all damage between you know if let's say they have the kvk pieces and they also have the tier five like you're looking at quite a bit of damage here same thing with like you know the the legs over here like they have extra damage as well and they're also going to get a bunch of troop capacity now this troop capacity in combination with the gloves we're looking at about two to three percent bonus troop capacity okay with all this stuff added up and maybe about five to six percent open field damage and about five or ten percent march speed depending on what they have their boots at so i'm not saying that you know there's no difference between a free-to-play low spender and a heavy spender 
but i mean the stat difference is a wash right because everyone eventually will get here so really the difference is two to three percent troop capacity six percent field damage ten percent march speed right let's let's call it that which isn't nothing six percent damage is a lot okay that is like having an extra ring of doom on your army but let's pop over to the crystal tech system okay now free to play players can get part of the way through the crystal tech for free if they grind and they do everything right but they aren't going to get some of the most important things that are later in the tree for example call to arms 2 gives you 35 percent troop capacity remember the new tiered system will give you let's say worst case scenario it's like three or four percent extra troop capacity okay this is 35 and if you guys don't know the number of troops that you bring to a battle is directly proportionate to how much damage you're doing oh and by the way uh you're also going to get 10 percent damage straight up from crystal tech and you're also going to be able to bring a seven seven marches which is crazy so that just means that you know heavy spenders that are getting all the way, all the way through the system are going to be swarming you not with five armies but with seven armies and that's also on top of the fact that they're probably going to have max attack percentage which is like 42 percent or something like that 40 percent whatever whereas a free-to-play player might have you know 25 35 whatever percent so objectively the crystal tech system is far more unfair to free to play players and low spenders than this new iconic upgrade system. It just is. That's just the math. It's black and white. Crystal tech is a bigger gap between free to play and heavy spenders than this new system. And also we can take a look at the armament system. This is my armaments on my Guan Yu. These are some of the best armaments that I have. A few months ago, I did a video covering Mr. Hope in wild lines account. And those are some insane players in rise of kingdoms. If you missed that video, check it out. I go over their entire account. It's unbelievable but these are the armaments that um wild lion has on his guan yu and if you compare that to my guan yu he has about 11 percent more stats on his guan yu than i do and he has an extra inscription now we can do the same thing with archers we could take a look at these are my archer armaments and these are his archer armaments okay now he has almost nine percent more stats than me i have some extra all damage okay but you could look at his cavalry armaments and then you could take a look at my cavalry armaments okay Okay. And you really start to get the picture here that for most armies, you know, I would say that my armaments aren't anything crazy. Okay. Uh, some free to play players might have as good armaments as me or better, possibly depending on your luck. But the difference between the armament system and this new iconic equipment system is that the iconic equipment system, you know what you're going to get and you can work on exactly what you want. You can focus on the blueprints that you need. You can focus on saving the materials that you need. And when you're ready, you can guarantee get that upgrade. Okay. With armaments, it is completely random and you also have the transmutation system also completely random and there's also a limit to the amount that you can transmute any given piece up to 10 right and so you could look at the new tier system and say okay well it's you know let's say three percent more troops six percent more field damage and you know some more march speed and you can compare that to the armament system and say okay well you know a heavy spender is going to have maybe 10 or 15 percent more stats than you in general plus whatever the inscriptions do it's like which of those is worse i i don't i don't know you can make the decision for yourself but for me one of the systems is completely rng based and the other one isn't and at the end of the day i would say they are maybe maybe equivalent in in how much of a role they play in increasing the gap between free to play and paying players right so between those two i'm going to pick the system that you have a guaranteed progression through every day of the week no question okay no question so in both of these examples i would say that the iconic equipment tier system is better for free to play and low spenders than the armament system because that's completely rng and it's better objectively than crystal tech because the crystal tech literally is just more damage literally 10 percent all damage it's literally up to 50 percent bonus troop capacity which is unbelievable plus seven marches it's actually crazy so of all the recent systems we've gotten in the game this system is actually believe it or not the most forgiving for free to play and low spenders okay and i know that i'm gonna get hate in the comments for this i, I feel like i've proved it in this video it's, it is objectively the case the problem with this system is that it's coming after the implementation of all those other systems so it's actually a compounding effect of frustration from players 
because they also have to deal with not only this new system but the armament system and also the crystal tech system and also they don't have the meta commanders and also they were still working on gear and so that's the frustration that players have and that's why i said earlier it's death by a thousand cuts this system specifically isn't that bad it's the fact that it's like the 12th system that we have in the game okay so what we've learned so far is that yes rise of kingdoms is at a low point and just if i might add if you're not convinced by just this google trends data my view numbers are significantly down than compared to what they were even six months ago okay maybe partial part of that could be me maybe my content is worse i don't know you guys can be the judge but i feel like i've been very consistent with the things that i've covered with rise of kingdoms and i don't think that there's been any significant dec decrease in quality of my editing or whatever right so this was another thing that chiskel mentioned in his video view numbers are significantly down on youtube i would say down by probably 30 percent maybe more depending on putting on the channel so we know the numbers are down and we know that this new equipment system isn't the sole reason but it's part of the problem so okay what are some solutions like what can rise of kingdoms do to save itself and then at the end of the video i'll tell you guys if the game is going to die or not the first thing that i want to say is um, i feel like the marketing for the viking civilization was top notch i don't know if i'm biased i don't know what it was but it felt like there was a lot of hype around rise of kingdoms for the viking civilization so whatever the marketing strategy there was they should try to do that again now obviously you know the game was more popular for the most recent greece launch but just because the game is you know it's been around longer also there was this again the change in the collecting of data so this was more accurate so first things first they need a really effective marketing push and one thing that we know for sure in 2024 is that they are planning a graphical overhaul for rise of kingdoms i made a video about that talking about rise of kingdoms 2 that's what i call it but they are literally redoing the graphics for the entire game from the ground up and that will be a significant opportunity for them to pump all of their money into the biggest marketing budget that they that they can muster my hope would be that over the next you know five months six months we see that graphical update come to life we also then would see the drop of a mayan civilization in june or july followed by a mega marketing push not only promoting the new civilization but saying hey if you've ever quit rise of kingdoms well great news it looks a million times better now the engine is better now everything feels amazing the game looks a million times better come back to the game and check it out i think that a massive marketing push with that timeline right the implementation of the graphical update massive drop of a new sieve for the summer of 2024 that in my mind would be game changing for rise of kingdoms that in my mind if done correctly would be you know another massive peak for rise of kingdoms and i i'd be willing to bet that that is the strategy that they are probably going to go with okay because it fits the timeline perfectly we know that they're implementing the graphical upgrade we know that there's a new sieve coming in summer i think that that would be the most logical strategy for their marketing department department to take another part of the solution that the devs have to get right is they have got to stop with the anti free to play updates and patches it's getting to be unbelievably ridiculous recently if you guys didn't know in the latest update they sort of patched or changed how iron hand baller works i have never done him i personally don't care enough about this i don't grind this type of thing if anything i just buy crystals because i'm i'm a stupid content creator but my understanding is that free-to-play players would grind this iron hand baller multiple times per day and this was a good source of progression for their account especially in kbk and it's my understanding now that this has been capped to 20 times and i don't understand a change like this i genuinely do not okay you might be thinking like oh well omniarch they they changed it because people were abusing it and when people abused it they would spend less money on crystals but guys if you are sitting on the kvk map grinding iron hand ballers all day you are a free-to-play player that is not spending money patching this as a grinding method out of the game or you know i always get comments saying oh well, they made it harder to chain barbarians and like look i'm not i don't know if that's the case or not every time there's a patch update people say that and it's like did they really i don't know also back when they put a cap on the amount of ap that you can get from doing barbarian forts also when they put a cap on the amount that you can help your alliance for healing okay these types of updates are so unfriendly to free-to-play players 
and it actually is for no gain right like if you patch iron hand baller and make it so you can only get his rewards less frequently is that going to increase the amount people spend on crystals the answer is no because the people grinding this were not spending money anyway okay so it's not like having this method is costing them money it's not the people spending all day grinding this stuff aren't going to spend money on your game regardless so leave it in the game it's grindy most people are not doing it anyway it's not breaking the game it is not ruining the experience for free to play it is not ruining the experience for the whales it literally is just one small little breadcrumb that some players can use to sort of catch up a little bit in one of the million systems in the game and now you've patched it out and you've made people angry for no reason do you really think they're going to spend money on the game now no they're not so just leave it just leave it okay now again this is i don't know much about this patch okay i don't know if they did i don't know what their motivation was for patching this they could have put a cap on here accidentally it could have been like a, an oversight they didn't mean to do it maybe they meant to only do it for some kvk store i don't know okay if they reverse this change great that's fine but i'm just using this as an example i also gave other examples like the healing help limit like the barbarian ap drop limit okay those are literally just detrimental to the free-to-play experience for no upside for them i i have not spent more money because of those changes it's only made the game worse for free-to-play players and i just don't understand why they farm the negativity it makes no sense to me okay so one of the solutions to the declining popularity of the game is to stop implementing pointless patches that just piss people off for no reason it makes no sense to me and the reason that this is so important okay and this may sound trivial but rise of kingdoms needs free-to-play players it literally needs free-to-play players okay now there is the argument that the whales pay the bills and that's 100 percent true okay baba himself pays enough money in this game and you know players like ahmad aziz right they spend enough money in this game where it pays for literally hundreds of thousands of other people to play it for free okay that is just the facts there is the the small spenders the people that spend 50 dollars a month will never come even close to the amount that a handful of whales spend the exponential growth when it comes to how much money they make from the top point one like the top point one percent the memes in the game probably outspend the bottom 99 percent like i'm not kidding it is unbelievable how much this game rides on the top one percent of players okay so it is definitely the case that we need the whales and there needs to be things for them to spend money on okay i'm th that's just how it is if you want to play the game for free someone's got to be spending something and there has to be some players who spend Spend so much that it offsets the cost for thousands of others okay and that's fine i like that but whales need players to kill and whales will not just fight other whales contrary to popular belief okay we always see the big kvks they're broadcast on youtube it's always a big deal and we love to see it it's exciting it's fun but whales also want players to stomp whales fighting other whales is stressful it's hard yes it's fun yes there is strategy there but deep down whales don't want strategy they want to win and that's why they're spending six figures on a mobile game you can't ask a whale why they play the game because they can't give you an accurate answer they'll tell you it's for the strategy or they'll tell you it's for one thing the data in psychology suggests that it's literally just to beat other people it's just that simple it's a game they want to win so if you spend fifty thousand dollars in the game and you're only ever fighting other players who spend fifty thousand dollars well all of a sudden it's an even playing field and that's not nearly as fun as a playing field where the deck is stacked in your favor and you win every time whales need free-to-play players you need them there is no game without free-to-play players likewise there's no game without whales okay so the trick here is to balance those two how do you make a game where whales can spend infinite amount of money without having an infinite amount of upside because then all the free-to-play players quit it is yin and yang there is no game without the other end of discussion there's no possible way for this game to exist only with spending players it will not happen another piece of the solution here comes in the form of kingdoms servers we're over 3200 servers now and there's too many of them there just is and one of the points that Chisco made was community and community is fundamental to games like rise of kingdoms no doubt in my mind that is absolutely the case now how can you have a community when it's spread across 3200 servers and lots of them are dead right that's just the truth a lot of them are dead there's not that many people there by that logic there's no community there the developers need to do one of two things either a they need to start merging a lot of these dead servers and bring people together force them to come together do it just force servers to be 
combined. If they don't want to do that, then we need more ways for free to play players to get passports for free. Okay. The reason for this is because yes, you could get it theoretically in your Alliance shop, but if you've ever been a free to play player trapped in a dead kingdom, you'll know that the King or the R4s or R5s, whatever, a lot of times they don't want you to leave. Why? The server's already dead. So if other people leave, the server's even more dead. Okay. So a lot of times free to play players have a really hard time convincing alliances and alliance leadership to give them passports for, for free in the shop. Like what, what benefit is it to the alliance or the server to have those players leave? There's no benefit there. Okay. So having the passport pages in the alliance shop is great if the entire alliance is migrating somewhere else and they're willing to let that stuff go they're willing to spend those credits but a lot of dead kingdoms maybe don't even have the credits or have you know alliance leaders online all the time right so there's if they're not going to merge the servers to bring the community together they've got to give free to play players more ways to migrate to somewhere where the community does exist and the final part to the solution here is that we need to stop getting new systems in the game okay because the most fundamental part of the game continuing to thrive is it being accessible to new players people are always going to quit okay some people will say that this tier system is the last draw and this is why they're going to quit and for some people that will be the case i've seen it in my comment section below some of you may be commenting that right now okay there's always going to be people that quit but there's also going to be always people that play the game for the first time okay that is always the case you know a lot of players have this fantasy that like oh like we're all going to band together and we're going to quit and the game's going to die like not really if there's new players but it's impossible for new players to get into a game like this when we have 14 i just counted 14 different systems you first you have to get your buildings to 25 then you have to finish your research for tier five you also have to work on your vip system because you get meaningful benefits from that you then have to work on getting getting commanders and getting their skills getting the right skills on those commanders you also have to level those commanders up and get talents on those commanders you also have to craft equipment then you have these special talents on the equipment then you have iconic equipment then you have the tiers for that iconic equipment which is the newest system but we also have armaments and then we also have inscriptions for those armaments and we have crystal technology we also have the museum relic system and finally you also can collect city skins okay so when you have to worry about 14 different sources of stats and skills and talents in the game it is impossible for a new player to come into this game and feel like they reasonably have a chance at catching up to anybody okay so moving forward we can't keep having new systems every year we just it is an unsustainable business model and this is the hardest part that the devs have to tackle and that is how do we keep adding things to the game to keep the whales entertained without making it literally impossible for new players to enjoy it that's the hard part and if i had the answer to that question i'd be a millionaire because i could consult for all these games that are dying on the app store i personally think that the transmog system that they implemented in the latest update is a good start okay because this is purely a cosmetic system but it is maybe something that they could get the whales to spend on at some point okay maybe not right now because it's a little bit limited but maybe down the line you know that's something that we could consider i don't know how you get more of these these brushes or whatever but sell the brushes in a bundle i don't care it's cosmetic i don't care if whales pay for cosmetic stuff it doesn't matter to me what if they do a graphical upgrade and now we have skins for different commanders okay maybe there will be enough graphical fidelity to see a commander in the open field and say hey that guy's got a, a unique skin on like in fortnite or something okay is that kind of dumb yes is it something a whale will pay for yes it, they will they will of course they will give them one percent march speed and say here you go now your guan yu has a santa hat and he gets one percent march speed in the open field because of it and it comes in a bundle for 19.99 and plus you get resources and gems and boom there you go okay that's basically cosmetic yeah one percent march but whatever it's one percent march speed okay i don't care about that okay make a zenith of power for commander skins and give them three percent march speed now you've got a bunch of servers competing for the top 10 spots and they're going to spend thousands of dollars for three percent march speed and let them do it and their guan yu or their cpo is going to look like uh you know the grim reaper or something like that okay that's fine with me that's another strategy that they could take these are purely cosmetic things and i'm perfectly fine with new cosmetic things being added to the game that people can spend their money on but there needs to be a way to not only not not implement more systems in the game but they need more ways for new players to catch up through these systems and ideally they need to take some of these systems out of the game bro like they need to there has to be something after season of conquest 
where you know maybe you're in season of conquest for six kvks and then you enter into a new beginning okay and you enter into a, a new thing where there are no armaments and there there is no crystal tech and 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 the game is simpler again okay that's my dream is that gonna happen no it's not gonna happen but that would certainly be a massive step in making the game accessible to new players there's way too many systems it is nearly impossible for new players to enjoy this and it also makes it harder for content creators like me to give accurate guides for these new players because it's like the truth is you don't even get to play the game for seven months right like that's just the truth unless you're you know spending money in kvk one two and three you're not gonna really be you shouldn't be spending your sculptures or anything like that on those early commanders anyway and nobody wants to play a game for seven months without investing in something cool okay so that is the number one thing we need to see them figure out how to make the game less bloated with a billion different systems finally my prediction is rise of kingdoms going to die in the next year or two no it is not we've said this time and time again you saw it at the beginning of this video every year i said rise of kingdoms is it dying no it continues to grow or at least it continues to be stagnant where it is now can it be stagnant forever no eventually stagnant things do collapse but in the next year or two i cannot see rise of kingdoms dying now would it be a problem if it stayed at its current level for the next two years i think it would be okay because right now i think we're seeing probably as many or more players quitting as new players are joining okay and that is definitely i mean you just do the math eventually the player base hits zero okay but i personally think that despite all of its flaws the developers have done a really good job at keeping this game very popular for five years over five years at this point and so to assume that this would be it that it's just going to die now not true not the case it is not going to die within the next year probably not within the next two years if i were you know willing to bet and more than likely I personally think that there will be a massive marketing push in the summer of 2024 with the new civilization with the new graphical upgrade and I think that that could be a very big peak for rise of kingdoms if it's executed properly and then eventually you know that's kind of just a band-aid to be honest with you eventually they have to address the core problems of the gap between free to play and pay to win and the massive amount of systems in the game that are just too complicated for new players and also way too hard for them to catch up with otherwise eventually rise of kingdoms will be the next game of war fire age and i do not want to see that happen i'm gonna be honest i love this game i really do especially you know a lot of the community members some of you are in the comment section below some people are very rude and very toxic but most of you are very nice and very kind and i, I love the game and i want to see it continue to succeed and that's why sometimes i have to make videos like this to express how i currently feel about the game game and maybe provide some insight to somebody who might be watching who would find my input uh valuable and i would love to hear from you guys in the comment section below what do you think about the current state of rise of kingdoms do you think it's going to die within the next year or two let me know what you think down there while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.